Let's now look at relationships through the eyes of Pope Paul VI. The first document that Pope Paul VI wrote was called the, the Church in the Modern World. It was written just as the Second Vatican Council was coming to a close. And so that document is kind of steeped in the, the thinking of the Council. In it, it, Pope Paul kind of spells out how the Church, how we, you and I, how we should relate to one another and how, as a church, we should relate to the whole world. And the, the kind of overall term that Paul VI uses to describe that relationship is, in fact, dialogue. And what he does is he begins by stating that the pattern of how God relates to us should be the pattern for us to relate to one another and to the world. Or if you like, just as God dialogues with us, so we should learn to dialogue with each other. He then goes on to kind of examine the, the qualities or the characteristics of that dialogue. And what I'd like to do now is to try and see those characteristics. And let's see if we can see the validity, or in fact the otherwise, of those characteristics in our own relationships. The first characteristic that Paul recognises is that God initiated the dialogue with mankind, with you, with me. Or if you like, God was spontaneous in his movement towards us. He was spontaneous in creating us. You know, he didn't, as it were, sort of hang around waiting for you and I to come and ask to be created. He made the move forward. He made the first move. The challenge for us to make the first move in relationships, to be spontaneous, is a very challenging one. It's challenging because, you know, it leaves us very open, open to be hurt, we are very vulnerable, we can be rejected. And yet, you know, I'm certain that our experience teaches us that it's those relationships that we take risk with, in fact, are the most fulfilling in our lives. It's when we are spontaneous, when we do move forward to other people, or other people move towards us, we, we feel, we see the impact in our own lives. I remember a number of years back, um, I was going to Germany with a group of Genesis young people in the diocese. It was a, one of those exchange holidays. The strange thing was, although I was in one sense looking forward to it, there was another sense in which I really was not looking at all forward to it. You see, a few months earlier, I had been over in Germany organising the visit. Um, and at the time, my father had been in hospital. He wasn't too well. But the doctors had assured me, look, go to Germany. By the time you come back, your father will be out of hospital. So off I went and tried to organise the visit. But when I returned to Glasgow Airport, my young brother-in-law was at the the, the airport waiting on me and he suggested that I go straight to the hospital because my father was very low that he was unconscious and still in hospital so we went in fact straight to the hospital and my father as I say was was unconscious and you know without ever regaining consciousness he died and somehow or other when I was heading back to Germany I was taking with me the kind of heart the guilt at not being present, you know, in those last few precious days of my father's life. But I got, you know, I got over to Germany with the group. And I think it was about the second day we were there, I, I received a phone call. And the German I was staying with came in and said, John, it's, it's for you, it's from Scotland. So, you know, I got to the phone. You can just imagine what's going through my mind now. And I got there and I lifted the phone and from the other side as a Hi John, how's it going? What's wrong? Hurry up. What? Nothing. It was one of my mates. He says, I just thought I'd phone. He says, I knew that you, you know, you really weren't looking forward to it. I knew you. He says, I just phoned to tell you that things are great at home and everything's going fine. It was amazing the impact that call had on that holiday. It was probably one of the best holidays I've ever had in my life. Somehow or other that spontaneous movement of John's towards me at the time 
kind of healed a lot of the hurt and allowed me to, as I say, to have probably one of the best holidays that, that I've ever had. I'm sure you, you know you yourselves can think of times when someone was spontaneously reaching out to you. It's got much more powerful impact on us than when you think somebody's got you programmed in to do something for you next. The next category, characteristic um, that I'd like to have a look at is what Paul calls goodness. He tells us that God's movement towards us comes from his goodness. That God moves towards us because he loves us, because he wants us, because he cares for us. And it's, it's a love that's, you know, it's not manipulative. It comes to us from a deep and, and, and an ardent love that God has for each one of us. You know, Jesus' words, you know, come to me all you who labour and are overburdened and I will give you rest. That characteristic, I think, challenges us to see that in our relationships, if there is that quality of goodness. You know, we, we can so easily use one another. We can so easily be manipulative of one another, sometimes even without noticing it. You know, and almost that manipulation becomes the basis of a relationship. Let me share with you another story from my own life. A couple of years back there, one of my best friends was considering leaving the priesthood. And for a few weeks, months, you know, we spent a long time talking together, praying together, reflecting together. And during all that time, I honestly believed that I was, you know, being completely open. And I was assuring him that really it didn't matter. It was, it was his decision. And whatever he did, you know, my love was secure. You know, that he would still be my mate, that it was important to me. Um, and I loved him no matter what he did. Then one night, suddenly I was, you know, I was kind of reflecting on this ongoing trauma as it was at the time for both of us. And it suddenly dawned on me that in fact, even without noticing it, somehow or other, I had started to kind of manipulate him. Because there was kind of one overriding consideration in my mind and that was somehow or other trying to keep him in the priesthood, to try and keep him as a priest. And in almost all the advice and encouragement I was given, that hidden agenda was there. You know, I wasn't really being open to him. I was manipulating him. I was trying to get him to say, yeah, I'll stay in the priesthood. So the next day, you know, we, we talked about it and I said, look, <laughs> maybe we better start from scratch. I've not been entirely open with you. I've got no doubts that, you know, being able to talk like that encouraged, well, helped us very much to grow through that trauma time. So, you know, we've got to be careful that we don't get involved, as I say, sometimes even without noticing and manipulating one another in our relationships.